Hi YouTubers, it's Nurse Vana and this will be part two of my day to day as a cardiovascular telemetry nurse. So I'm gonna jump right into it. Hopefully you finish that video and jump right to this one. That way it's a continuous. Uh, this one shouldn't be that long. Uh, I'm gonna try to speed it up. That way it won't be three videos because it don't take that long. It do, but you know, I don't wanna keep y'all so long, sorry. So let's jump right back into it. So we was on the uh, write your medications down. So you write down your medications. Uh, if they need to be put on a pump, uh, if they on a, a tube or uh, you gotta put it through a tube, uh, you're gonna need a pill crusher. This is time to be thinking about all of that and make sure you have that ready for when you enter the room. So you have six patients. So you have to keep in mind, time management is so important. And most of these meds are due it the exact same time. So when you write down your meds, this is stuff I would keep in mind. But basically when I write it down, I put down where time is due. And also this would be the perfect time to prioritize who you're gonna see first. What med is due first? What med is most important? What medication is um, time sensitive, etc. If you need to reorder some meds that's not here, which ones would those be? So um, this is a perfect time to get your computer and make sure it's stocked and ready to go. Some people grab that computer as soon as they get there. Um, that's also good too. Uh, it depends on how I'm feeling at the time. So you wrote down your medications, etc. So now we're gonna grab our medications. So six patients, y'all. Ideally, they want you to grab one patient at a time go in the room, come out, grab them. Nobody does that. I don't know why people lie. Nobody does that at all. So um, the way I grab meds is I grab six bags and I put all six patients um, number on each bag. So room number, I don't put their name, no patient information on these bags. I just put room numbers. So I put the room numbers on the six bags. That way it's all organized with a permanent marker. You use a dry erase marker and now one is gone. You're like, oh shoot, which room is this? Matter. <laughs> but you don't get mad unless you scan it and all that stuff. So matters rarely happen with this. I've never, I can say never because it has never happened, had a mad error because of pulling all the meds at one time and put them in a bag that's clearly written on. I've never had a matter, ever, ever. And all the nurses do this. Don't let them lie to you, they do it. So I pull all my meds for each patient at that time. I write the number on the bag and I uh, start with the PIXIS. So I go to the PIXIS, I put the bags to the side and I focus on one patient at a time. And six patients mean a bunch of nurses trying to get some meds for all these people. So it's a dog eat dog world. Make sure you organize and your time management is good. That way you have to pick this first. You grab all your meds for that one patient and then you move to the next one. And everyone does it. They get annoyed. Hey, I only got this one med to pull. I mean, if I'm having a good day, go ahead. But you don't be better be putting one pool in one med. You've been up trying to get three or four. We don't have a problem. Now you skipping me. <laughs> I don't be rude about it, but you know what I'm trying to say. So pull your mask for that one patient, move to the next, and so forth. It's a quick process once you get used to the pixies, et cetera. It's really fast, it's not slow. You notice that a med is not there. Nine times out of 10, it's in the bin. Not in the uh, pixies, it's probably in the bin or you have to order it. That's the last possible thing. Um, so you grab your meds, and then if they are not there, you move to the bins and you grab your meds from your bin. Um, pull your fluid, etc. And which is important when you check that you already switched out the ones that need to be filled up. You already did that. So you don't have to worry about that now because you addressed it and report. You see how the time management is slowly coming to form. So now you're just pulling fluids, you know, just to have it stocked and ready to go. For the ones you can't pull. Some meds are to be refrigerated. You don't pull those out because you want it there. 
No, the medication will go bad. Not good. Mm -mm, not good. So, um, simple things like that you would do. So you pull it on your mats and you got them ordered by the room you're going to go to. You didn't order the ones that you need. You can't focus on those that you need unless they are time sensitive. The meds that aren't there, you request them. You call pharmacy, hey, I need this, bed, this mat. Please bend it up real quick. You do that, but that you don't stop and wait for that mat. You don't do that. You move on and you go see your patients now. Now, you're not basing who you're going to see based off when the med is due. You're basing it off the patient's acuity. If that patient needs to be seen right now, you go to them right now. And at the same time, you're doing your meds. So it's like killing two birds with one stone. That's a bad But <laughs> that's exactly what it is. Now, if your patients are pretty stable, then I will go off what med is due now, what med is like that. So my patients are stable. So I'm gonna go off what med is due right now, which ones is time sensitive. You go to the room, you give the meds and time wise i always aim to start giving meds at eight o'clock because that is the window we have an hour before hour after um 30 minutes before 30 no it's an hour, it's an hour. i started at eight so i start at eight o'clock giving meds and usually i'm done with the sixth patient by nine o'clock the latest i'm very thorough um with my med given i don't waste no time i make sure my um while it's stocked make sure you have flushes make sure you have iv um things in there just in case the iv blows when you do your flush be prepared for whatever can happen in this room that way you're not coming in and out in and out in and out in and out it gets old and it gets annoying and we all been had those shifts where the report was so horrible to where you plan catch up on the stuff they should have done so now you coming in and out the room because now your game is thrown off but if you Follow these steps and do them. Make your own routine. It becomes easier and your shift becomes smoother. So make sure your while is stopped. And then you give your meds, do what you do, you do all of that. At this time, even though you have checked and mentally assessed your patient in the room, etc., now is the time to do a quick head to toe. So I assess, it's my um, <laughs> nephew, I assess all my patients when I'm in the room, um, check their heart, lungs, pulses. This is time to do all that. Check their dressings, do need to be changed, etc. Do all of that now. Talk to your patients. Ask them how they, what they plan to do for your shift. How are they feeling? Have they eaten? This is all the time. This is where you address your patients' needs the most. When you're in the room during med pass. This is not a give meds and go. This is a give meds and address the patients. Do everything you need to do in the room that you can. The things that you can't address. Make sure you let them know I will do this at so and so time. Or I will do this at this time. I have to see this patient. I do this. This is where you do all of that. So, you've given your meds. Look at you. You got your meds done at 9 o'clock. What am I going to do next? So now you've given meds. Start charting. Chart your assessments now. You have six patients to see. You do not want to be that nurse that's trying to chart at, what time you leave? Shoot, 7.30, you didn't gave report, but now you got to chart all these last minute things. You don't want to have, you don't want to be that nurse. So chart, this is time to chart. Um, call lights might come, you address that as you go, but I try to chart all my assessments all my IV assessments, any assessment, I's and O's, chart all that now, get it out the way, do it. So, you've started charting, you've done your assessment, you did all of that, what to do now? I know you are hungry, time to eat. Get some breakfast, get a snack, go pee. Do all that now while you have this little break, so. Make sure you tell the nurses, hey, you guys, I'm going to go use the restroom real quick. I got a little window. Let me go do that before the next minute, do before anything's due. Use the restroom, or if it's in the morning time, grab breakfast. Uh, just make sure a nurse is uh, covering your patients just in case. Keep your phone on you just in case someone calls. This is time to do that. So you took your little 15 or probably 5 or 10, <laughs> depending on your unit. Okay, nine times, 10, nine times out of 10, it's time to get meds again. So, 
Now you're giving meds again. Mostly, most of all the patients not getting meds. So it's just the ones that have those, you know, certain meds to give. Um, you're addressing patient concerns. This is what I call maintenance time. If they need a bath, I would do it at this time. Dressing changes, new IV dressings. This is time you would do all of the busy, busy, busy work. Cause mostly you're doing dress change. You're gonna be in a room for a good 30 minutes. If all your other patients are good to go, meds were given, the pain is in control, you've checked their pain again, you know, this is time to do all the stuff that's time consuming. So guaranteed, this is uh, not an everyday thing that it happens for the most part, my shift goes like this. So this is what I would do that, Q2 hour checks, this is where you turn your paint. This is all of that at this time after you took your little break and now you're about to get down and dirty. All right, so also I would check baths again. Is my heparin running low? Um, check your labs if, if you had to draw labs while you was doing med pass. Sometimes PTTs be around nine. You've checked it. Recheck the lab, see if it's come back. If you have to adjust your heparin. This is time to do all of that. Check. I check my labs throughout the day just to be sure nothing has changed. <laughs> Cause, woo, when I did oncology, they labs. You just never know. But, but this is cardiovascular. Most time they draw that lab. That's that lab. If they have a PTT, it will change, etc. If you did replacements, you know, you just do. This is the maintenance hour. Even though you maintain it all day, but this is where most of the chunk of the work is going. You ripping and running, you doing all of this. This is the time to do that. All right. You've done all that. And around this time, it's probably one, two o'clock once you finish all that. If you like me, you hungry. It's time to eat lunch. So <laughs> you prioritize this so you can eat lunch. You do everything that needs to be done right then. You do it. That way you check when the next med is due. This is why I write my meds down. If there's a med due um, at three, I'm like, okay, so let me try to do everything I need to do by one, leave that two o'clock room for lunch. That way 30 minutes of that is if one o'clock runs over. So now I have 2.30 to three to eat lunch, chill, get on my phone, do what I need to relax, rant, whatever. So now you'll be eating lunch. Cool, you didn't eat. So you come from lunch, now you're checking your orders, if any new orders was given, you're checking your patients, see how they're doing since you went to lunch, asking the nurse who relieved you, hey, anything changed while I was gone? Uh, this way you do your last minute medications, use these meds to do three, four, five. So you're doing all of that. Uh, meds need to be ordered, um, any drips need to be reordered for the next shift coming on. Now you're just preparing to go home, but a lot can happen at this time. But now you're just checking your, um, just checking out your charting, charting all the I's and O's that you did, charting any assessments that you redid, any baths that you did, any dressing changes that you did. This time to check all of that and keep your charting updated. It's a lot of charting and nursing. If you do it throughout the day, you will be done by the end of the day. There is rare time that I'm stuck because of charting. I look i prioritize my charting just as much as i prioritize everything else and it, i make sure i get it all done how i do it all i don't know i'm an octopus you get used to it it just it you get used to it and you have help if it's something that you can't do right now ask another nurse ask your pct to help you out they're willing to help um so this is basically everything for any shift but if you are night shift on a cardiovascular unit, you have to draw labs. So our labs usually start around three o'clock every night, nonstop, you have to draw labs. If it's, um, I don't know how every hospital is different. Sometimes we have phlebotomy come help us. If not, we are responsible for drawing these labs. So at three o'clock, once you come from lunch, three o'clock, you draw in labs. And it's so important to know if you have IV access. I mean, like pick lines, sometimes they let you draw from there, but most time they want a stick. So if you have a hard stick, prioritize them. Um, if you know you're gonna need help with it, make sure you tell the nurse, hey, I'm gonna go try and draw this lab. If I need help, do you mind helping me? You, most of the time they will. 
Um, usually the sticks is a butterfly stick. You draw your labs, uh, make sure you know what labs you're giving. It's, uh, I mean, you're grabbing, print out your thing, make sure the printer works on your computer. You should do that from the jump. Sometimes you don't, make sure you find a computer so you can know where to send your um, labels for your labs. So you draw your labs, you do all of that, and you check your chart and et cetera. Um, so now um, you check in your room, check in your patient, make sure they're clean, make sure the room is presentable, check the trash out, change the linens if you didn't already, ask the patient any more pain, but you ask them about pain when you go in the room every time. Um, checking your charting. Now you winding down for the end of the day. Um, make sure you check your strips. Sometimes you get so backed up and you're like, okay, did I check my strips? You did early, remember? Sometimes you don't. And the technician would be like, hey, can you do your strips? I hate when that happens. I'm like, come on, Siobhan, you know better than to not check your strips, okay? Check your strips. So just ask yourself again, did I check my strips? Did anything change? If anything changed and they were starting on amiodone drip or a pill or something, make sure you have been updating the nurse, make sure you, I mean, the uh, physician on how they're progressing with that strip, et cetera. Make sure um, if they are MPO at midnight, make sure you've done that, make sure you've charted that, uh, any change in diet, make sure it's documented. You're doing everything so the next shift can have a smooth transition. All right. So. Um, you're checking your lines. I said all that. And so now you're preparing to give report. You want to be a good report nurse. You don't want to be the nurse like that little girl give a horrible report. Make sure you know your patient's H&P. Check the patient's H&P because the nurse coming on may not know this patient. So I use this little hour. What time is it? At this point, it's probably what? 536. I start checking H&Ps, writing down stuff that I didn't know, stuff I didn't get report. Check the H&P out, write it down, write any previous procedures, write down everything that you did for that day, because they're going to check the chart and they're going to make sure you did it. Any procedures coming up, uh, what is it, because the nurse would like to know, let them know what's coming up, what's in the future, what's the plan for that patient. Uh, are they going to sniff? Are they going home? They need to know if it's a discharge. And this is stuff that the charge nurse will ask you, so you have to be um, prepared to know that. You need to know if they have a procedure coming up, if they are getting discharged, etc. Okay, so now at this point, you're about to go home, you're about to give report. So now you're just gonna give report on your day. And now uh, you've done everything you're supposed to do. So this nurse is happy with you. Bags are full, patient is happy, patient pain is, you know, good. Meds was given, all tasks is completed. You are done for the day and you are free to go home. So that's pretty much the day to day as a cardiovascular nurse. It's more to it, way more to it, but that's just the gist of it. I think there's certain things that you could do throughout your day to help make your day go smoother. I hope this helps someone. If you have any questions about anything, sorry, I'm slapping my, <laughs> I'm slapping my thing. If you have any questions about anything that I've said, please let me know below. I do not mind asking it. If you want a day to day as an oncology nurse, which is so different, if you want a day to day as an ICU nurse, please let me know down below. I don't mind doing that because they all are very different. So, yeah, that will be the end of this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Stay tuned for more. Bye.